In this video, I'm going to show you how to divide radicals. Now, like multiplying radicals, when we divide, we can divide the coefficients together. And we can divide the radicands together. So only a coefficient can divide by a coefficient, and a radicand divide by a radicand. Now, also, you must remember that you can only divide the radicals if they have the same index. And that's that little number to the left. Now, after you've divided, see if you can also simplify the radical. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So in this first one, we have 7 root 45 divided by 3 root 5. But we notice that 7 can't divide by 3, so we're going to leave that as a fraction. However, I can divide the root 45 and the root 5. So I'm going to rewrite the 7 and the 3. And then root 45 divided by root 5 is square root of 9. So I'm going to place that in the numerator. And then we can say that square root of 9 is 3. Now instead of multiplying it by the 7, I'm going to leave it as 3 because I notice that I have a 3 in the denominator. So therefore the 3's can cancel off. And therefore, I have 7. Let's take a look at the second one. So in the second one, I do have coefficients, 18 and 2, which can divide. So I'm going to divide the 18 and the 2. And that's going to give me 9. And then I'm going to divide the root 24 and the root 8. And that's going to give me root 3. So I can't do anything more with this. I can't simplify because root 3 is already in simplest form. So this is going to be 9 times the square root of 3. All right, next I'm going to show you how to rationalize the denominator. So to simplify an expression that has a radical in the denominator, we're going to do something called rationalizing. So we're going to rationalize. The denominator. This means that we're going to convert the denominator into a rational number. Rational meaning that it's going to become a fraction or maybe just a whole number or an integer. So we want to get rid of the radical so that it be can become a rational number. So we're going to take a look at two different cases. Uh, the first one is being monomial denominators and then we're going to take a look at binomial denominators. So to rationalize the denominator for monomials, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the radical term in the denominator. Because we know that when we multiply it by itself, it's going to be just become itself, the whole number. So for example, we have two root six divided by three root seven. So if I multiply the top and the bottom by the radical in the denominator, which is root seven, I can see that this will become two square root 42 in the numerator and then in the denominator because I have root 7 times root 7 I know that's going to be just 7 because I have two 7s. So now I have 3 and if you want to write this out it can be 3 times 7 or if you don't want that step you can go 2 root 42 and then 3 times 7 is 21. All right, let's take a look at one more. So notice I actually didn't multiply by three, which is also in the denominator. Remember, I'm only trying to get rid of the radical. So I only have to multiply by the radical in the denominator. So in question B, the radical in the denominator is root 10. So I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 10. So when I do that, I get the five times the square root of 10. And then root 10 times root 10, remember, there's two root 10s, so it's just going to be 10. Or you can think of it as root 100 first, and then root 100 becomes 10. So I have 2 times 10, which is 20. And then I can simplify my 5 and my 20, and that reduces to 1 over 4. So now I have root 10 divided by 4. Now I can't simplify this because there is no um, perfect square that goes into 10. All right, so lastly, let's take a look at this one with the variable. So here, same thing as before, we're gonna multiply the top and the bottom by the radical in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by root three x. 
So this gives me 4 times root 15x in the numerator. In the denominator, I have root 3x times root 3x, so they're both identical terms. So I'm just going to have 3x in the denominator. And then that's it. I can't do any simplifying. 4 doesn't go into 3, and 3 definitely doesn't go into 15 because 15x is in the radical, whereas 3x is not in the radical. Next, I'm going to show you how to rationalize binomial denominators. So for a binomial denominator that contains a radical, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So what's a conjugate? So if you recall, conjugates are two binomial factors whose only difference is one of the signs of the term. Remember, only one of the signs will be different. So the conjugates, when we multiply them out, they have a product that is a difference of squares. All right, so let me show you what this means. So if I have a minus b, the conjugate would be a plus b. Okay. So when I multiply this out, I get a squared and then plus a b and then minus a b. So what I'm going a times a, a times b, negative b times a, and then negative b times positive b. So the negative b squared. Notice the two middle terms are going to disappear because they are opposites of each other. So I'm going to end up with a squared minus b squared. Now let's see what happens when I multiply conjugates that have radicals in them. So I'm going to have root u times root u. So remember this is going to be just u since I have two u's in each of the radicals. And then I have root u times root v. So this will be plus root u times v inside the radical and then I'm going to multiply minus root v times root u so another root u v and then negative root v times root v is going to be negative v so remember I have two roots that multiply it's just going to be the number inside so just like the difference of squares in the first uh, multiplication here we have the two middle terms here also canceling off so then I'm only going to be left with u minus v and so notice that there is now no more radicals all right so let's try it with some fractions here all right so the conjugate of the denominator which is 1 plus root 2 will be 1 minus root 2 so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 minus root 2. So please write that with brackets around it so that we can see that it's a separate binomial. Okay. So then I'm going to go 5 root 7 times 1. So that'd be 5 root 7. And then 5 root 7 times negative root 2. I'm going to get negative 5 and then root 14. So that's my numerator. So now let's go to the denominator. So 1 times 1 is 1. And then I have 1 times negative root 2. Now, actually, maybe for this first one, we will actually write everything out. So we have 1 minus root 2. And then root 2 times 1 is plus root 2. And the root 2 times root 2 is going to be negative 2. So notice in my denominator, the negative root 2 and the positive root 2, they're opposite, so they will cancel off. So in my numerator, I have 5 root 7 minus 5 root 14, all divided by 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Now, we don't tend to want to just have a fraction with a negative 1 on the bottom, so I'm going to divide each of these terms in the numerator by negative 1. So I have negative 5 root 7, so 5 root 7 divided by negative 1. And then also negative 5 root 14 divided by negative 1 will give me plus 5 root 14. All right, let me show you one more where the radicals in the front and then we also have a minus. So this one's a minus uh, in the binomial. So the conjugate will this time be 3 root 5 
and then plus 4. So multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. Okay. So when we multiply this out, we get 2 times 3 root 5, which is going to be 6 root 5. And then 2 times 4 is plus 8. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky. So if you want to write it out separately, you can. So we have 3 root 5 times 3 root 5. So that's going to be 9 root 25. Or you can put 9 times 5 right away, or you can put 45 if you like. But I kind of want to show a little bit of work here. So 3 root 5 times 3 root 5 is 9 root 25. Now I notice that my middle terms will cancel off because they're conjugates. So if you don't want to write that down, that's okay. But if you want to, you can also write the plus 12 root 5 and then minus the 12 root 5. Okay, so just to save us some space here, I'm going to erase those. So then I have negative 4 times 4, which is then minus 16. Okay, so now I have 6 root 5 plus 8. And then here I have 9 times 5, which is 45 minus 16. So then my finally reduced fraction, 45 minus 16, is then going to be 29. So notice in both of these questions here, um, there used to be a radical in the denominator, but now I don't have a radical in the denominator anymore, and that is called rationalizing the denominator.